I'll start by going through some slides before diving into the sample code. If you would rather skip the slide talk, feel free to jump straight to the code section. Today I would like to talk about why we should use Node.js and Go together in backend development. In backend development, choosing the right tool makes all the difference. Node.js and Go are both solid options, so why not use both? Node is all about speed, flexibility, it's easy to work with, has a huge ecosystem and crushes real-time apps and I.O. heavy tasks. Go, on the other hand, is built for raw performance. It's super fast, efficient, and handles heavy workloads like a champ, thanks to Go routines and its compiled nature. Let's look into strengths and weaknesses of Node. Ease of learning and rapid development. Most developers are familiar with Node.js uh, Node JavaScript, which makes onboarding and building of prototypes fast. Huge ecosystem. Node comes with NPM, the biggest package repository out there. So there's a library for pretty much anything. This makes building a feature a lot faster. Non-blocking IO. Node's single-threaded event loop is great at handling IO operations efficiently, whether it's serving web, web requests, querying databases, or calling APIs. Honestly, it can manage thousands of connections at once. That's why it's perfect for IO heavy and real-time apps. Unified full stack. Using JavaScript across the stack means we can share code between the client and server. Plus, front-end developers can jump into back-end work more easily since it's all the same language. Now, about the weaknesses of Node, it's single-thread limit single, uh, limitations. Since Node is single-threaded, it doesn't automatically use multiple CPU cores. For CPU-heavy tasks, a Node process can block the event lo a loop slowing everything down. Higher memory. Every node process runs on the V8 engine, which can lead to higher and less predictable memory usage under heavy load, especially in large scale systems compared to a Go service. Dynamic typing. JavaScript is dynamically typed. So if we are not careful, we might run into runtime type errors TypeScript helps a lot by adding type safety, but pure JavaScript still lacks compile time checks, which means we might catch errors later than we would in Go. Callback async complexity. Async await has made things way easier and better, but nodes async nature can still be tricky for beginners, especially with the classic callback help problem. Now let's look into strengths and weaknesses of Golang. High performance and efficiency. Go compiles directly to machine code, so it runs fast, almost like low-level languages. It's great for CPU-heavy tasks, and since it runs as a binary, there is no in interpreter slowing things down. Concurrency model. One of Go's biggest strengths is, is its built-in concurrency with Go routines and channels. Strong static typing. Go keeps things simple on purpose with a minimal syntax and feature set. Its static typing helps catch errors at compile time, making code more reliable in production. Fast startup. Go compiles into a single binary that starts up fast and uses less memory. There is no big runtime to load, unlike Node's uh, V8 engine. Excellent ecosystem. Go was built for the server, so its standard library includes solid implementations for HTTP servers, JSON handling, and database drivers. Its package ecosystem isn't as big as NPM, but it's growing fast. Now weaknesses. Less flexibility for some tasks. Go favors simplicity over flexibility. It finally added generics in 
version 1.18, but they are still not as powerful as TypeScript's. Plus, Go doesn't have exceptions, so we have to handle errors explicitly. Smaller ecosystem compared to Node. While Go's ecosystem is strong in certain areas, it doesn't match the sheer volume of packages available to Node. Learning curve for JavaScript developers. If our team is mostly JavaScript devs, switching to Go comes with a learning curve since it follows a different paradigm. Go isn't a complicated language, but it's still a new one to learn. Whereas sticking with Node means working in a language that our team already knows. Less suited for rapid front-end integration. Go is awesome for the server, but we wouldn't use it in the browser, except maybe with uh, WebAssembly. For things like server-side rendering, Node has the edge since it's JavaScript all the way through. Now let's look into when to use Node versus when to use Golang. We use Node when building real-time applications with lots of I.O. For apps like chat plat uh, platforms, uh, collaboration tools, and streaming dashboards, Node's even loop is a game changer. It's great at handling I.O. bound tasks and managing tons of simultaneous connections efficiently. Rapid development. For startups or new features, being able to tap into an NPM's huge library and ship fast can matter more than squeezing out every bit of performance. Application is closely tied to a web protocols or formats like JSON. If our app heavily relies on web protocols like JSON and HTTP, and we want to use the same language for both front-end and back-end for any reason, uh, Node is a solid choice. It handles JSON naturally and makes uh, building REST and GraphQL APIs super easy. The workload is lightweight or moderately demanding in terms of CPU. For example, Typical crowd web services where the bottleneck is usually the database, not the server language, Node is perfectly sufficient and very often used. Now let's look into when to use Go. High performance is a requirement. If we need to handle tons of requests, high throughput or low latency processing, Go is the way to go. Its speed and concurrency make it perfect for high volume APIs or parts of a system that need to crunch data fast. CPU intensive tasks or heavy concurrency. Think of an image or video processing. Real-time analytics. Go can handle this easily with its built-in concurrency and multiple core support, while Node would need extra processes or clustering to keep up. Building microservices or distributed systems where each service needs to be efficient and we want a simple deployment. Go's compilation to a single binary and low resource usage is perfect for microservices that need to start fast. System tools or network services that require low level control or high reliability. If we are building things like a custom server, network proxy, Go is the best choice. It's widely used in infrastructure projects like Docker and Kubernetes, which shows how powerful it is for backend systems. And lastly, I got team values. If a team prioritizes compile time checks, simplicity, and maintainability for a large code base, Go is a solid choice. All right, let's jump into an example. I have a simple in-memory counter API in both Node.js and Go, then compare how they handle concurrent requests. On the left, I have uh, this Node server that increments a counter and returns it as JSON. The loop is just there to simulate a heavy operation, and it runs uh, 10 to the power of seven times, which is 10 million. And it's gonna be running on port 3000. It's a pretty simple node server. To test it, I'm gonna use uh, a tool called AutoCannon. Basically, it's a, it's a speed test for servers. It floods APIs with requests to see how well they handle traffic. This is the comment I need to use. Uh, this part of it shows 
which says the number of concurrent requests that I have need to have. And this is the duration, which is 10 seconds. So I'm gonna copy it. And let me run my server first. Okay, the server is running on port 3000. I'll go here, paste, paste it. Let's see what comes out of it. So now it's sending lots of requests uh, to that endpoint, which is counter endpoint. Okay, now this is what we have. Um, this table is the latency table, which just represents the time taken for a request to be processed. Uh, I mean, response time. It shows that for 2.5% of requests took around 13 milliseconds, 50% of requests were uh, handled in 24 milliseconds or less, and you know, 99% of requests were handled at 42 milliseconds or less. The average uh, response time was 25 milliseconds. This, uh, this table shows, uh, this row shows, um, uh, the table shows how many requests per second our server handled. So um, the slowest, which is right here, shows one person of sampled seconds handled at least 282 requests per second. 2.5% of uh, sampled seconds handled at least 282 requests per second and uh, let's see 97.5 percent of sample seconds handled uh, 426 seconds 20, uh, 20, 426 requests per second and uh, this shows how, uh, how much data was transferred so overall 4,000 requests were handled in 10 seconds and 977 kilobytes was transferred. So I'm gonna stop this server now and let's do the same thing with Golang. On the right, I have the same server and it does the same thing. But here's the cool part. Um, each request run its own Go routine automatically. This is how just Go routine handles requests. So if I send 10 requests at once, Go can run them in parallel across multiple CPU cores. While Node here, what it did was process them, it processed them one by one since it's a single thread. So now I'm gonna run the server, the Ghost or Golang server. Uh, okay. To see how it works. I'm gonna copy this again. Let's hit the MPI, uh, uh, our API. Let's have this side by side. Alrighty. Okay, now let's do a comparison between these two. So the latency table for Golang, here for 2.5% of uh, requests took 13 uh, milliseconds, while for Golang it took one millisecond. Way different. 50% of requests uh, took them 24 milliseconds to be processed here, two milliseconds. The average for node was 25 milliseconds. Here is 1.99 milliseconds, way faster. The worst case for JavaScript to handle a request was 55 milliseconds, for Golang was three, 13 milliseconds. As we can see, it's, it's processing a lot faster. Going to this uh, second table, for the number of requests handled per second, as we can see, the, uh, the slowest part was at 1% was 282 requests per second. Whoa, look at Golang, 3,657. The average here was, uh, sorry, the average was 391, 390 uh, requests per second. The average for Golang was 4,000. And as we can see, JavaScript, JavaScript server handled 4,000 requests in 10 seconds and pros and sent and transferred 977 kilobytes versus Golang processed 40,000 requests in 10 seconds 
and transferred 5.7, 5.17 megabyte. That's a lot faster. So what this demonstrates is for CPU bound tasks, Node.js requires extra strategies to avoid blocking versus uh, Go handles it naturally. However, if we remove this for loop and right here as well, which we are simulating CPU bound uh, tasks, they both uh, work uh, pretty well. So as a wrap up, I would like to mention, I would like to talk about this last question that why JavaScript and Go like work well together and how they complement each other. So JavaScript and Go work can work together, letting each do what it's what it does best. Instead of picking just one, many teams go with multiple languages. For example, we could use Node as an API uh, gateway to handle client connections, authentication, and simple requests while offloading heavy tasks to Go microservices. Node is great for dealing with JSON, WebSockets, and coordinating responses while Go powers through to complex, high-performance uh, work behind the scenes. This setup balances speed and flexibility thanks to Node with raw performance thanks to Go. And in terms of uh, because in terms of communication, because they both have strong support for web technologies, they communicate smoothly over HTTP and gRPC or message queues. In the next video. I'll dive into more code examples to explore concurrency models and how they impact performance in both Go and Node. Thanks.